Hello, my name is David Finlayson with Chesapeake Technology and today I'd like to show you how our contact filter tool works uh, with the other reports and display features of contacts in SonarWiz. So what I have uh, open here is a project with five uh, side scan lines and I have already gone through these side scan lines and picked out um, a lot of contacts, probably over a hundred. Here we go. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make the contacts show up a little bit better so they're easier to see on the video. And you do all that through the contact manager. So if you click uh, post processing and contact manager, you can see a list of all the contacts that I have picked. And so I'm going to select all, hit the edit contact feature and then change the color to blue and change the symbol to a solid circle and then click OK. Click OK here and now uh, they show up a lot better. Now when you pick a contact in uh, SonarWiz, a contact is associated with a specific track line. So for example, if I zoom in here I think there's uh, some interesting stuff. Here's a, a shipwreck. If I put a contact or try to capture a contact here, the first thing SonarWiz will do is open up the associated track line uh, that was underneath the cursor. And here you can see I've already picked some contacts for this spot. Um, so when we can put a new one in there. Let's just stick one right there. And now you see the contact shows up here contact 0217. And if you edit that contact, uh, you see our properties of every contact. The most important one probably is the link between the coordinate position and the track line. So we now have a circle here indicating where the contact was picked and it is associated with that particular track line. So there's a lot of properties to a contact. A lot of them are automatically filled in by SonarWiz. Things like where in the file you were, were you on the port or starboard side, what ping number was it, what time was it, the latitude and longitude. But there's also uh, properties that you can fill out as the user. Uh, for example, this is a rec, so we can change the class of this contact to a rec. And I'm using a predefined nomenclature here, which is something that the user sets up before you do a project. Um, I'm fairly certain that this is a rec, so I'll give it a high level of confidence. And these, these two classes here are completely customized to my project. Uh, you would set them up with your own nomenclature and your own symbology. Uh, there's other properties here, the areas, block numbers, magnetic anomaly associated with it. You can put in some notes um, in here if you want. And then we can do some uh, mensuration. Uh, if you click the length button, you can measure the length of this boat. You can measure its width. And th the shadow here doesn't show up too well because the, the boat is so large uh, relative to the image. We're all the way zoomed out. We're used to dealing with stuff that are a lot smaller. And this one is uh, 65 meters long, so it's pretty large. And then uh, if you have a shadow, uh, you can measure how far out that shadow goes. And about the best we can do here is it goes to the edge of the image. So it's at least, uh, standing proud of the C4, at least about 2.8 meters. And that's uh, part of the problem with this uh, image here is it's too close. So another cool feature you can do is search uh, other files that have this same image in it and see if we can get a better view. I'm not going to show you that today because I want to go do something else. So we'll click OK and close that and our new target will show up here. Now, when you zoom out and you look at all of the targets that I've picked, it's basically a big mess. How do I know which ones are associated with a wreck, which ones are logs, which ones are dangerous to navigation? And that is where we can use the properties that we just filled in for those contacts uh, to sort 
and change how things are displayed. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So if you open up the contact manager, there are a few of those uh, properties are shown right here in this uh, upper level dialog. You have the latitude and longitude, the map coordinates, what file that contact was associated with, a little bit about the first class that you uh, picked. Is it a log? Is it debris? Is it unknown? That sort of thing. So let's start with uh, finding all the contacts that are associated with a wreck. So if you go to the filter section of the contact manager, you can click build to create a filter rule. On the left hand side are all the fields that are associated with a contact. And we're going to go to user class. And here on the right hand side are the distinct values that have been used so far. So we have some contacts are boulders, there's debris, large rocks, logs, pilings, pipelines, unknown, and wrecks. So we can say user class is equal to wreck and click run query. And SonarWiz will trim down the list of displayed contacts to just those contacts that have class one equal to wreck. So if we close this dialog, we can now see uh, the contacts that are associated with wrecks. Another thing you might be interested in doing is identifying which contacts are associated with uh, hazards to navigation. So let's remove this filter and you can see all the other contacts come back. Let's build one that just looks at the height property. So height is greater than or equal to say one meter off the seafloor. Run that query. Now all of these targets are especially um, are sticking into the water column in a way that might be dangerous. So we can identify those separately. We'll select all of those and we'll change them to red so it's easier to see them on the map. Change that to red. Click OK. Now they are all showing up as red and then we can remove the filter and only the ones that are red are especially dangerous. Let's set, let's go back to just uh, looking at wrecks. So we'll say uh, user class equal to wreck, run query. Now we've got a smaller set here and we're going to export those to a report. So we'll say report generator. Um, we'll go with the default set of properties and the default is to print everything we know about that contact. We'll pick uh, PowerPoint format and the design. I've already typed some stuff in here uh, the first time I ran through this. So I'll click run. It takes a moment for the report to be generated. And what SonarWiz is going to do is only export the contacts that meant that filter query, which is basically all the ones that are ships or shipwrecks. So we can see here in SonarWiz, or excuse me, now we're in PowerPoint, and SonarWiz has built a nice report for each one of these uh, reports. Another little trick uh, for these reports is if uh, you don't like the way it looks, you can go into the uh, PowerPoint design and go to Format Background and make this uh, transparent, the built-in SonarWiz background, and it lets the PowerPoint template show through. And then you can just pick one that you like uh, and apply it to all the slides. Um, I don't know if that's aesthetically pleasing or not, but uh, uh, here's one that's a little bit more professional. And now uh, you can make these templates uh, with your company logo and company fonts and that sort of thing. And uh, they'll look like they came straight from your marketing department. All right. So the key thing to remember is that inside of the contact manager, as long as you've filled out uh, these properties of a contact, you can use them in queries to control how SonarWiz displays the contacts, and what contacts are exported, which ones get deleted. And uh, it's a really powerful tool for large projects where you're making contact management it becomes a big issue. Uh, this is a lifesaver. For more information about SonarWiz or to see more videos like this one, please visit us at www.chesapeaketech.com.
Thank you for watching.